Hello, we are very happy to have today Jason Russ for an interview, the great American singer-songwriter. We are uh, curious about what he has to tell us about the new album and um, about life. I am Anne Katrin and this is uh, for Audiophile TV. Enjoy! Ow. The. Oh. Jason. Well, thank you very much. I'm really glad that you are here today on your birthday. Thank you very much. I have a uh -oh. small present for you. Wow. I hope you still enjoy thank tea you. and tea. I very much do. I am a tea junkie. Okay, it is organic. Thank you. Green, green chill. Tea. Thank so you. With, uh, some other herbs. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. I hope you will like it. It smells fantastic. Thank you. It's very thoughtful. You're welcome. Wow. So uh, I thought about bringing you a birthday cake, but as you're vegan, I thought this would be rather <laughs> this difficult. This is this is perfect. You know, I, I try not to do too many sugars as well. Like, but tea, I love tea. Okay. I drink tea all day long. Great. Um, so yeah, this is perfect. So you are regularly visiting Whole Foods. Regularly visiting Whole Foods. Yep, um, and we support local markets, farmers markets especially. Um, we love to support the organic farmer. We love to support the local farmer. But do your local farmers also sell vinyl and uh, record players as Whole Food does now? Wow! Um, yeah, I can't say that my local farmer does sell <laughs> vinyl and record players, but um, that's very cool that Whole Foods is doing that. Yes. Wow. Unfortunately, we don't have Whole Foods in Germany, but uh -huh. I know that they are selling vinyl now. So. Wonderful. Will the new album also be released on vinyl? We are going to do a limited pressing on vinyl. Yep, we okay. sure are. So is this um, interesting for you or uh, important for you to, uh, to have something that is valid? Because vinyl is a, a little bit more valid than maybe, uh, or of value than maybe downloads. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I've noticed it in the last couple of years um, that when, I, when I'm downloading music, um, I, I forget about it. I forget that it's on this hard drive or it becomes a little more disposable. So it's more of a short-term listening. But when I have this record collection, I can see it building or I, when I add a new record to my collection, I kind of put it in front. And I have a different appreciation for it, much like if I were to buy a painting, I hang it up at my home and it becomes a conversation piece. It becomes something I can see. It's very tangible. And then also when I'm listening, it's, it's not just a quick fix. It's not something that's disposable. It's something that I, I actually enjoy the, the sound of and I enjoy taking the time to listen. And I find that I end up listening to the entire side of the album and not just one song. Would you say your new album is like a concept album? Um, I mean, I guess you could say it's like a concept album, um, or it's more like a traditional album, in that I had my four collaborators and we worked on all the songs together. We, record, we wrote and recorded all the songs together. And by doing this, we had a very cohesive sound through the entire album. Um, so it is more like a quintet, the Chase and Russ quintet? Exactly. So that's why you have this V on the cover. Yes. Um, it is a quintet record with um, four incredible musicians called Raining Jane. I met them uh, eight years ago. Uh, I saw them at a show. I was blown away by what they did as musicians. And I said, would you ever want to collaborate? And they said, yes. How can you sing about love if your parents uh, were divorced? Oh, I think I could sing about love because my parents were divorced. Um, since I was four or five years old, when my parents were divorced, I've had this feeling in my heart that, um, that I will, when I get married, it will be forever. And, and also, even though my parents divorced, they still showed me love. They still show me that 
we can all still be in love and experience love and have a great life. And so they, I got to grow up in that example. And I think that's really why I write about love all the time is because I've, I've seen many examples and I've overcome many, many heartbreaks from when I was four and saw my parents divorce through the many, many different relationships I've had or the different friendships that have fallen apart. Um, and I write about love to, to make myself feel better and then ultimately um, I trust that the listener will relate to this and maybe it'll resonate with something that they, they wish to heal. But um, what would you say if somebody uh, would say that it is not that deep your songs because it's always happy music, shiny mm. happy, the melodies mm -hmm. at least? Mm -hmm. um, I would disagree. I would say that it's very deep um, because life is an inside job. And how we think about the world, how our thoughts, our speech, our beliefs, our actions, our attitudes, all of those things are going to make up our life experience. And we're only going to be as happy as we make up our minds to be. And if I'm going to sing positive songs and happy songs and songs that might offer up some suggestions on how to even maintain a positive outlook um, or how to heal a broken heart or how to recognize that there's darkness in our lives but also recognize that there's a light that we can turn on and we can continue to shine. To me, all of those things are very deep. To, to do any type of inner work at all is to have depth. And um, all of my music comes from, from doing inner work. Um, certainly, when one sings a sad song, there's a, there's a recognizable state of vulnerability um, in, in singing about your truth and in singing about in, in that which was sad at the time. Um, but as a performing artist, I don't want to take a set list full of sad songs onto a stage. I don't want to say to an audience, come with me and let's relive these really horrible moments in my life where I was ungrateful or I was sad and I didn't know how to get myself out of it. I would much rather sing to the audience, you know what, I was sad and this is how I got myself out of it. This is how I healed and came back in hopes of inspiring someone, you know, and revealing to them how I transformed my, my darkness. So there have been these dark moments and also in your positive songs, there's a little bit of the sadness inside it? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, my... Po my overall positivity is an overcompensation for sadness in my <laughs> okay. life, you know? But, and, I, and I say that because I'm human, not because I'm a miserable human being, but just because I'm simply human. And we as humans can so easily fall into these um, sort of accidental thoughts of, um, you know, nobody likes me or I'm not worthy you know, I'm late, I'm weak, I should be I'm doing fed. better, whatever, exactly. Yeah. And so by being conscious of our thoughts, I've had to reprogram myself to, to rise above that and live a more grateful and more fulfilled life. Um, and so that's why it's ended up in my music. So would you say we can condition ourselves? De yeah. Definitely. Okay. With the, so everybody should listen now to positive, happy music and uh, the world would be better, maybe? You know, there, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if our nightly news showed more positive and happy stories, it might inspire more people to do positive and happy things. And does this also mean uh, the album title, Yes, to say yes to life, to yourself? Yeah. Yeah, you know, but I will stress that no is as important. Um, when did you say no the last time? Oh, I've said no many times. Um, I say no in a lot of emails, I get a lot of requests. <laughs> and my management's always trying to make, ask me to do this or that. And I say plenty of no's. And the one thing I'll share about no is no means not right now. It doesn't necessarily mean no, I don't like that, get away from me. No just means not right now, it's not a good time. 
And it's a really powerful word when used correctly and used truthfully. And I know me, I've said yes way too many times and I find myself in a situation where like, oh, I just don't have time for this and now I'm gonna be late and plus I'm not gonna be able to give my full attention to it but I already said yes and here I am. So no is, no is very, very powerful. And what is easier for you to say yes or to say no? Well, it's easier to say yes, because I like making people happy. <laughs> and usually my yes gives someone a smile, it makes them feel better, like, you know. Um, but it's not always easier, because then I've compromised my time, or I've sacrificed some time, and I don't end up, you know, really getting to do this other project And maybe something. lose yourself. And yeah, you if lose you yourself. If you always say yes. Definitely. You give yourself away, and then before you know it, you're having a panic attack, because... <laughs> You didn't give yourself, you didn't give yourself the time that, that you crave. Mm. Would you say that your music changed when you decided to, to live vegan? Um, yeah, I would say my music changed. If you go back and listen to my early stuff from the coffee shops, or even my first two albums, Waiting for Morocco to Come or Mr. A to Z, there are some songs that... Um, I hear, and maybe my ego was involved, or I didn't do any editing. I was just like, no, this is how it is. It's deep, you know. It wasn't deep. It didn't. It, it only made sense to a certain level. The rest you was just sort of this vague poetry, which is okay. That's who I was at the time, and that's how I was writing, and I was happy with it, and I love singing those songs. But... In 2006, when I started to cook for myself and I started focusing on a vegetarian diet, um, there became something, a, a bit of a transformation in my life. When you become conscious of your food and become conscious of your actions, you also become conscious of your thoughts. And that's when my writing started to take a shift and I started to be a little more conscious of my writing as well um, to make sure I was writing things that were coherent, that were that had messages in the music that had medicine in the music um, so that in a way the music was also very healthy would you say you're a better person since then um i i would like to think i'm a better person you know i'm i'm sure i still do things that piss people off you know um but you know i thought i was a nice kid back then um But When you know, you eat burgers. yeah, I take better care of myself these days, and so in that regard, I, I think I'm I have a little less of a footprint on the planet. You know, I walk softly and uh, I try to give back as much as I can. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you. Ow. The old field. Yeah, the, yeah. the old church. Yeah.